Graphing all day and I'm graphing all night. I'm graphing to the beat and I graph it up tight. I graph in the morning and I graph till I'm done. And everybody know that I'm number one. Cause I'm graphing, I'm graphing, I'm graph, graph, graphing. I'm graphing, I'm graphing, I'm graphing to your graphing. I'm graphing, I'm graphing, I'm graph, graph, graphing. I'm graph, 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 graphing. Graphing all day and I'm graphing all night. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about graphing. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break it. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host, Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So, uh, Shu, do you, do you graph all day? And all night. Do you graph to the beat? And I graph it up tight. Let me show you how. Graphing, a lesson from the lab skills unit. Why graph? Graphs demonstrate data trends in a very visual way. Graphs may show a direct relationship or an indirect relationship, also known as an inverse relationship. So as you can see in the examples here below, the one on the left is a direct relationship. Volume on the x-axis and mass on the y. As the volume increases, so does the mass. So they both go up together, that's a direct relationship. The other example here on the right, volume versus pressure, we have pressure on the x-axis and volume on the y. And as we increase in that pressure, the volume's actually going down with that increasing pressure. So as one's going up and the other's going down, we have an inverse or indirect relationship. Axes. The x-axis is the horizontal axis and represents the independent variable. This is the one that the scientist changes in the experiment, or independent i, it's the variable i am changing. And we're seeing how x affects y. The y-axis is the vertical axis and represents the dependent variable. This is the one the scientist observes during the experiment. y depends on x, get it? Making your scales. Be sure that the scales you pick allow the smallest and largest numbers to be placed on the graph. This should include all data points. The X and Y axes don't have to have the same scale. It is gonna depend on the range here. Be sure that the interval on the scale remains the same along the entire axis, even if you don't start at zero. To be safe, always label the number values for the X and Y axis of your origin. And finally, label each scale with a name and a unit. Don't forget units here. Units give meaning to the actual scale. Plotting your points. Carefully plot each XY point as a dot. Be sure that you know which column is which on your data chart. Circle each dot. This represents some uncertainty for each measurement. Plus, it's easier for someone grading your graph to see where the exact points are after they are connected. Connect the dots. Use a straight edge to connect each dot. May have a jagged look to it. Best fit line. This shows a perfect trend, even though all points plotted don't necessarily touch the line. Should be a single straight line drawn with a straight edge and not be jagged or curved. Don't lift your pencil. Should have as many points on it as possible, with some below the line and some above the line. These graphs are allowed to vary by student. Not every student's gonna have the exact same best fit line. Best fit curve. This shows a perfect trend, even though all points plotted don't necessarily touch the line. Should be a smooth, continuous curve drawn freehand and not be jagged. Don't lift the pencil. Should have as many points on it as possible with some below the line and some above the line. So this example here is pretty darn good data. So it kind of looks like the line is touching all the dots, but it's really not. Title your graph. Always use the format Y versus X for your title. The graph below would be titled Volume versus Temperature. Don't use the effect of or the dependence of as your title. Graphing. Don't. 
Don't! Use a pen. Don't! Leave your axes unlabeled or missing units. Don't! Change your scale within an axis. Don't! Use a break in the middle of your graph. Don't! Plot points off of the grid. If you have to draw in your own grid lines, your scale is incorrect. Don't! So, yeah, Shu, I think we see this one the most often with our students. If you find yourself drawing more boxes on your graph, all that means is you didn't get a proper scale in the first place. So go back and get a proper scale for that axis. Don't! Forget your Y versus X title. Don't! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do an example here of graphing. We're going to uh, take a look at the following data that was collected for various samples of aluminum. We're going to plot mass versus the volume of aluminum data using a best fit line. Shu, are you ready? I think I'm ready. Okay, so looking at this data here, what's going to be our x-axis and what's going to be our y? Um, I am kind of used to seeing x in the first column, y in the second, but since it says plot the mass versus the volume, and I know that the title is always y versus x, it looks like volume is actually the x-axis and mass is the y-axis. Good, good habit to get into as far as labeling your data columns. Yes. Okay, so what is this graph gonna end up looking like? Well, it says using a best fit line, so it's gonna be a straight line at the end after right. plotting all the points. Good, straight line, not jagged at all or curved, perfect. All right, Shu, so we're gonna label our axes here. So let's start with the x-axis. All right, so we labeled x as volume, so I'll write volume here. Perfect, and let's label the y-axis. So the y over here is mass. All right, so one thing I notice here, there's something we're missing on these labels. Um, oh, right, we need units. Yes, we do. So All let's right. write our units in. So it looks like, according to the data table, volume is centimeters cubed, good. and mass is in grams. Also good. All right, so let's, after we've labeled this, let's come up with a scale, all right? So let's start with a scale for the x-axis. All right, so sometimes it takes some time to come up with a good scale, and you know, students are not always gonna get the same scale. I actually went by 0.2, I know that kind of sounds crazy, but I really wanted to spread out my numbers, so that means every one, two, three, four, five is one whole number. Now I'm gonna be able to fit all my data for volume, which ranges from 1.23 to 4.65, that'll fit in a zero to five scale. Looks good, let's do the y-axis now. All right, um, for this one, I uh, I know some students like to use that little squiggly line, which, which you can. I'm actually just gonna make sure I label my origin like you said earlier, and I'm gonna start right at three, because my first number's at 3.45, and um, I gotta range all the way almost up to 13. So I actually just went by 0.5s, so uh, every two lines represents a whole number. All right, so again, it looks like I'll be able to fit all of my numbers in on that scale. Okay, good, I think we're ready to plot, so why don't we do that next? All right, so let's plot. All right, sure, looks like we did a good job of plotting here. How are we gonna get our best fit line? Well, I'm gonna need this straight edge here because I wanna have a smooth, continuous line here. All right, so I wanna do best fit. I wanna make sure that I've got maybe some above, some below, but this is pretty good data, so I don't think it's gonna be too crazy. How All does right. that look? That looks pretty good. Some above, some below, looks pretty darn good. Okay, what are we forgetting here? We got one last thing to do. Oh man, it seems like I've thought of everything, but uh, oh, we need a title. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Students often forget the title. Let's not forget that. All right, so the format we talked about earlier was Y versus X. So Y is mass, and then versus the X axis is volume. Perfect. All right, you try. The following data was collected for water. Plot the vapor pressure versus temperature of water data. Use a best fit curve. Remember, don't take your pencil off the graph when drawing that best fit curve. And don't use a straight edge either because it's a best fit curve. Happy, Happy graphing. graphing. That's gonna do it for today's episode on graphing. It's been emotional. Don't. Promotional consideration by. Big Cat Bar. Snap me a chunk, snap me a chunk, 
Snap me off a chunk of that big cat bar. But we never are for we zone.